Hello everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and this is the Storytime channel. Today we've got some entitled parent stories and our first story of the day is by Neppy Princess one My child isn't allowed to play with Black Panther. So this happened a few weeks ago, not to me but to a co-worker of mine. I don't know if this counts as entitled but I just want to share this story. I work at a McDonald's in my town. I open in the wee hours of the morning to keep the store clean for all you loving customers, especially with what is going on. You're welcome. Anywho, around 10.30 a.m. we start lunch, only on weekdays, and we started to get busy quick. A lot of parents will order Happy Meals for their children and maybe a small drink or coffee for themselves. I've noticed this pattern. My coworker, we will name Sam, was working in the back cash slash first window. She takes orders and pays out the orders to keep the drive through moving. Around 11 a.m. ish, this older gentleman, could be a grandpa, I don't know, comes back to the drive through. Sam opens the window. Disclaimer, I may be paraphrasing the conversation, this is just how my coworker described it. Sam says, Is there something wrong? The grandpa says, Yes, I just ordered this happy meal for my son slash grandson. He can't play with this toy. The grandpa throws the toy at Sam. It was a little Black Panther toy. Our store, along with all the others worldwide, are doing a thing with Marvel and their superheroes. So the first toys of the week, or at the time, was Black Panther. Sam looks at the grandpa. Is there something wrong with it? Is it broken? I can easily replace it for you. No, he can't play with it because he's African American. I honestly didn't know or can't remember what happened next. I assume Sam gave him a different toy that we had available or just said, sorry, that's all we have. Whatever happened, Sam kept the line going. In my opinion, I would have given the grandpa more credit if he had said, he can't play with it because Black Panther is a, insert racist you know what word. But customers come and go. I don't think Sam will ever see him again. So if you were working the drive through and you witnessed this happen, would you maintain professionalism and just kind of replace their toy and let them move along? Or is there something else that you need to do in a moment like that? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by AITA Crybaby. Dad acts like I'm obligated to spend the holidays with him. I was raised by a single father with whom I rarely saw eye to eye. He tried to mold me into his views of traditional masculinity the good and the bad. He'd praise me when I excelled in certain roles like a handyman or football player, but then he'd be dismissive over crying or being bullied at school. He took his role as the disciplinary figure very seriously, even during the holiday season. My dad always throws a party for our family every Thanksgiving and Christmas. He provides great food and some of my relatives are pretty decent. However, my dad is a terrible host. He had everyone come over, including people who were toxic to be around. I swear, every year there's always some fight about the pettiest of things. All the vegans get is a salad? The kids shouldn't watch anything with Santa in it. A gift card? You couldn't have just sent me money? It's like they're so obsessed with making everything perfect that anything not going their way is unacceptable. On top of all that, my dad pretty much makes the parties all about him. He tries to micromanage a lot of activities, from the movies we'd watch to whatever we made conversation about. The worst was when he'd brag about me into sounding like he molded me into his views on traditional masculinity. He'll brag about how I was the MVP in youth football, even though I hated it, or that I kicked butt in martial arts, even though that's not what it was about, nor why I enjoyed it. When I mention achievements I'm actually proud of, like taking up creative writing or a new book I'm reading, he'll pay no heed. My dad says he's happy I have a girlfriend, but also that he's glad I didn't turn out LGBT. As far as gifts go, he'd only get me things that he approved of, whether I wanted them or not. New boxing gloves or clay pigeons? Heck yeah! A PS4 or 3DS? Eh, uh, could be worse. A journal or the entire Harry Potter book series? No, I won't do that to you. Basically, I've come to associate the holidays with my dad asserting more dominance than usual and being forced to interact with toxic family members. Fortunately for me, my girlfriend's dad invited me to spend both Thanksgiving and Christmas with them. Finally, I think I'll get to enjoy myself for a change. Then, earlier today, my dad called me asking, 
when I'm coming over for Thanksgiving. I told him I already said I wasn't coming and that I'd be going to my girlfriend's place. He said things like, you always spend the holidays with your old man, or your cousins like seeing you, you know. My cousins have stopped coming over for the holidays for years. I tried arguing that inviting family over might not be a good idea anyway due to the pandemic. People like my grandpa or Uncle Devin are at a higher risk. He called BS on that since, you don't seem worried about giving your GF COVID. I've tested negative and nobody coming over is at high risk. Then my dad went on this tirade. Oh, I see how it really is. You still think I'm a terrible father, right? You'd rather throw me and your whole family under the bus when all we want is to spend the holidays with you. I'm offering you free food and family time, but you'd rather piss it down the drain than be grateful I'm even allowing you into my home. You're welcome, by the way. I've told my dad many times how bad he makes me feel, about myself or even just in general. He'd argue, I gave you everything you needed to survive in this tough world. If I made you feel that bad, how'd you get so good at karate? You wouldn't know how to get a girlfriend if it weren't for me. In other words, my feelings are invalid because I still succeeded in some aspects of my life. Seeing as we weren't getting anywhere, I hung up. I hate it when my dad guilt trips me like this because, as much as everyone's told me he's wrong, there's still some part of me that feels like I should feel guilty. I get that Christmas and Thanksgiving are about family, but for once, I'd like to be with a family that's actually fun to be around. Others have said that I should be grateful I even have a dad, let alone one that's taken care of me. That's like saying having a dog that barks and bites you is better than being petless. I don't know, I just want a nice holiday season for once. I've kind of experienced the same thing in my life to a certain degree, and it's really difficult because you don't want to disappoint your own parents, but you also have to realize and understand that they're very narcissistic and they're very selfish. Bottom line, I don't think it'll kill him if you don't show up for Christmas, and it'll still make you way happier not having to be around that. At a certain point, you should be able to do things for you and not have to obey everything your parents say. Even though they might have done a lot for you, you're not obligated to do everything they say and kind of be their own puppet. But it's still incredibly hard to just make that call knowing that you're upsetting them. Our next story is by Totally Not An Alien. My uncle is getting divorced from his ex, who's the pinnacle of entitled parents slash entitled mother. Firstly, thank god my uncle is going to be financially separate from her soon because she's a whole heap of crazy. Entitled mother left her three kids, one of whom has mental and physical disabilities and ignored them for three months, then came back asking for my uncle for money to support them even though they were still living in his home. Then we come to find out Entitled Mother openly said she wished she stayed with him till his parents died so she could take their money. Continuously rags on my family in general. But recently she freaked over my mom too. My mom works with my uncle in a family business that Entitled Mother has nothing to do with. And she's called her lawyer saying that she deserves 50% of the company because of her pain and suffering. Believe me, she was anything but suffering in a marriage where she did none of the work. Ultimately, she's a really bad person and continuously bullies my uncle making comments about how he leeches off his parents and how we're all stuck up rich people. Moral of the story, if you're divorcing a crazy lady, call your lawyer ASAP. If there's one area where you most likely do want great legal representation, it's around relationships, it's around businesses, and especially when it relates to divorce. It's unfortunate to hear about this, and it's unfortunate to hear how they're manipulative and they're trying to get money for the kids that they obviously don't even care about. I'm just hoping for the best for OP's uncle. This next story is by Who Stole My Cake? The things my mother has willingly done to ruin my relationship with my girlfriend, but ended up ruining my relationship with my mother instead, plus update to my last story. I have posted several stories about my mother behaving like crap towards my relationship and my girlfriend, Eva. Today, this has definitely ended in my and Eva's favor. My mother won't bother us anymore. My mother is a very rude, insensitive, arrogant, obtuse, openly Islamophobic and xenophobic person. She never liked Eva, nor initially the idea of me dating at all, but it reached new heights when we moved in together, moreover into the house she thought she would inherit one day. 
It is my grandparents' old house and they couldn't take care of it anymore, so they moved out. My mother hates her for several reasons. Eva is of foreign descent and her mother is a Muslim immigrant in this country and she is very straightforward about what she thinks about something slash someone. She also has a skin condition and commits a serious crime because of it. Vitiligo and being happy and proud of herself for it. Rightfully, her with vitiligo over without it all the time. While this might come off as flaunting it, Eva is easily the most beautiful, most amazing and kindest person I have ever met and I love her more than anything and anyone else. I don't even know if I can even deserve her. Anyway, ever since my mother somehow came to terms with me dating, she was commenting all the time about how I deserve better, how she is not the right one for me, how she's with me only because I'm the only one desperate enough to like her, and how we'll break up anyway as teenage love doesn't last. Well, that was more than two years ago and it doesn't seem like it's anywhere near ending. One time, she berated me for breaking my wrist when I took the shortest route to provide first aid to Eva. Now, not to brag, but basically saving her life after some accident when we were out in a forest together. I won't specify neither the accident or injuries for the sake of privacy, though it wasn't good at all. And then called me a drama queen when the accident actually traumatized me. Another problem with my mother came almost one year ago. She was becoming a couch potato. I had an insane workload on my back. She didn't do anything to help, but always complained about me being lazy when I found the free time to spend time with Eva or just play some games. This has led me to the thought of moving out. Further on, all the way until last week is documented by several stories I've written about her in the past months. In short, insulting Eva, always complaining, dropping chocolate-topped cookies in front of Eva's dog, and insulting it after Eva asked her to be careful, trying to hook me up with someone else, making a scene at a family dinner, insulting Eva's family background. Now, onto this week. My family members have gotten the wind of something happening between my parents and apparently my mother told them that I accused her of something only to cause problems between my parents which is BS because the only one waving accusations around is my mother. Most of my family really likes Eva, so some either didn't trust my mother or are gullible because they knew of something my mother has already done. My phone was flooded with messages from family members asking what happened and how could I accuse her of something like that. My mother told them that I accused her of insulting Eva's Muslim background using the knife attack in Nice, which my mother has actually done. So I've just straight out sent screenshots to the ones who believe that I accused my mother. This spread very fast and to my knowledge, most of my family has blocked her. And so finally, did I. My father is about to file for divorce. Not going to lie, if he gets custody of my brother, and he's most likely to, it's only good for him, as my mother is just a very witchy burden. Although it wasn't OP's decision to have it go down like this, it's for the best because nobody needs that hatred and that stress and drama in their lives, even if it's their parents doing it. I'm just glad OP has somebody that they truly love and enjoy being with and appreciate. And our final story of the day is by Red NRYT. My kids deserve vitamins more than you. Short phone call between my mom and my aunt, the entitled mother, recently. Sis, we have no more vitamins. You promised to help us. Send us more, please. My kids need them. Mom says, but I just sent you a bottle cap last week. It should have lasted a month. A month? You gotta be kidding. With me, my three kids, plus my husband, it won't even last a week. But I thought it was only for your youngest. I only sent you children's vitamins. Your two kids are all grown up. They are adults already. I believe the dosage won't be enough for them. Shaking her head. What are you saying? Vitamins are important. Especially in times of pandemic. We should all drink vitamins regularly. You should know that. But we don't even drink vitamins here. Why would we buy all of you vitamins? I only promised to give your kid vitamins to help you because your husband lost his job and I feel pity for the child. Exactly. My kids deserve to drink vitamins because I'm a responsible parent. Apparently my kids deserve it more than you. Just send us some more or just wire some cash so I can buy one myself. The one you sent tastes weird. That's because it's children's vitamins. You should not have drank it. Huh, 
There's no arguing with you. You just can't understand the importance of vitamins. Whatever, just send us the cash. What am I, your personal savings bank? Hangs up. I'm all for helping family out, but this is obviously very entitled and stubborn. They originally called and asked for help for their child to get vitamins for them, which is a very easy thing to help out with for sure as a family, but then to call back and say, no, we need more because we're all actually eating these children vitamins that I claimed is for my youngest. That would make it very easy for me to not buy more because Lord knows it's not even going to go to the kid, right? What a shame. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So if you enjoyed the stories today, let me know which one was your personal favorite and why in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, please like this video and subscribe and turn notifications on because anything you do helps this channel grow so much more. So no matter what you do, whether it was just watching the video, liking, subscribing, thank you all so very much for supporting me right here on the Storytime channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you all next time right here.